Hey, hello everyone. Welcome to this session on extending the valves in Tomcat in the Apache Con Asia 2022. My name is Dennis Jacob. I'm a senior consultant at a leading payment industry organization where I am part of the middleware engineering group. I am based out of Singapore. My interest includes application server technologies, containers, cloud native technologies, and web application security. Let me quickly move to the agenda of this session. I will start with the common challenges and requirements with request processing in Tomcat. I will then explain what is request processing pipeline and how does VAL fit in there and how it works. Further, I will speak on what are the commonly available Tomcat valves and how to create the custom valves. I will also go through uh, three key studies and how does using a custom Tomcat valve help as a solution there. To close the session, I will also touch upon few caveats and performance considerations while using the valves. Okay. What are the common challenges and the requirements with the, the request processing for an application that is deployed in the Tomcat? Let us go through a few cases. Pre-processing of requests. What does this mean? Often there are requirements that the inbound request needs to go through some pre-processing operations. Let me explain it a little more. Before an application deployed in the Tomcat processes an inbound request that comes to it, there may be a requirement to execute some logic or carry out a pre-processing of request. This logic is kept independent of the application deployed in the Tomcat and mostly coupled with the Tomcat and infrastructure. For example, there needs to be uh, some custom headers needs to be inserted or may be modified on the inbound request before the application deployed in the Tomcat processes that request. Filtering of request. What if there is a need to filter the inbound request? You may need to filter out requests that may be coming from certain IPs or IP subnets or you may need to filter out requests that has a particular header or user agent header for example or even filtering and denying their request that uses HTTP methods such as delete or trace. Enforcing security. Similar to the filtering of request and allowing only the legitimate request, there may be requirement where the inbound request can be validated for certain security requirements such as uh, blocking any undesired request. For example, uh, if the Tomcat connector is set up with a two-way TLS with client authentication required, it can be further enhanced by validating inbound client certificate parameters. Parameters such as the serial number or the common name and other related attributes of the certificate's uh, distinguished name can be used for validation. It can be validated against uh, a trusted whitelisted set of such values and blocking the unauthorized or untrusted request that comes to the Tomcat. Tomcat rate, uh, Tom, uh, traffic rate limiting is another uh, requirement or challenge that you may need to tackle. You may need to throttle the inbound request flow in a controlled way so that the application deployed on the Tomcat can handle it in a optimized way. It may be required that you need to control it even dynamically as well. Another common request processing challenge is in the area of troubleshooting. It's not particular about checking a particular uh, area as such, uh, rather it's subjected to how and what you wanted to troubleshoot on the request and the response. But some of the common troubleshooting area are uh, checking the headers, capturing the request attributes, or capture the threat states, etc. Monitoring and logging is another challenge that we may come across. You may need to capture the request attributes, writing them to custom logs, 
or send as feeds to external monitoring tools. It's not limited to the request or response attributes, but also about how long it takes to process the request and uh, capturing the state or the matrices on the JVM or heap or thread states when processing a request, etc. Now, with these are some, if not of all common requirements or challenges related to the request processing. Now, what is a solution or how does Tomcat handle such requirements or challenges? Tomcat valves would be a great solution for the problems or the requirements which I have mentioned in the earlier slide. A valve is something very easy to visualize. It looks something similar to the picture as you see here. Uh, let's do a deep dive into valves and see how it play a role in the request processing in the Tomcat. Before we start explaining on valve, let us understand what is a request processing pipeline in Tomcat. Request processing pipeline is similar to a chain of responsibility in object-oriented design, where a request that comes to the Tomcat goes through a series of components in sequence. It can be explained as a request pre-processing chain before the request is processed by the application that is deployed in the Tomcat. What is a valve and what is the role of valve in the request processing pipeline? A valve is a request processing component associated with a particular container. It intercepts the request that flow through the request processing pipeline. One question you may have here is that, will it be only one valve per each component? No. A series of valves are generally associated with each other into a pipeline and for each component. There are four subcontainers in a Tomcat container, namely uh, engine, host, context, and wrapper. Associated with each of these subcontainers, there is a standard engine, standard host, standard context, and standard wrapper valves are accessed by default, and it cannot be removed. Valves work in a chain. If no valves are defined in the Tomcat configuration, the chaining will be using uh, only the standard valves in each subcontainers. There are valves provided by Tomcat by default, which basically intercepts the request and execute a logic that the valve intended to do and pass it on to the next valve in the chain. Valves are normally configured in the server.xml configuration file in a Tomcat. Depends on how, uh, where you wanted to place the valve, be it in the engine or host or context level, the valve executes the specific logic selectively. For example, uh, if the valve is placed in the engine, all requests that are received by the Tomcat will be processed by that valve. If the valve is placed in the host level, only those requests that are addressed to that host will be processed by the valve and so on. So we see valves intercepting requests that uh, flows through the request processing pipeline. Now, what is the difference between a valve and a container uh, and a filter? Uh, valves are specific to Tomcat. Filters are standard and their behavior is defined by the specification. Mostly the capabilities of a filter can also be achieved using a valve, but the capabilities of a valve cannot be replaced by filter per se. Now let us look at a diagram that depicts the Tomcat request processing pipeline. The inbound requests to the Tomcat are received by the connector in Tomcat. Connectors are responsible for listening to the network ports and getting the connection requests. A Tomcat connector has two major components, a protocol handler and an adapter. Protocol handler handles the inbound TCP packets to convert them to HTTP requests. Further, adapter converts them to servlet objects. I'm not going into the details of the request, process, uh, request handling at the connector level as it is not in the scope of this session. Once the adapter prepares the servlet objects, it then invokes the pipeline method to pass the request to the container's pipeline. 
As mentioned before, the request processing pipeline is a chained uh, components that flow through different stages in a hierarchy such as engine, host, context and valve. There can be one or more valves configured for engine or host or context or wrapper. Even if there are no valves defined, the standard valves at each subcontainers will be involved to uh, complete the chaining of the request flow. Once the request finishes through the request processing pipeline, it then invokes the uh, filter chain and further for the servlet processing. Where do you normally define a valve? For Tomcat, valves are defined uh, in the server.xml or context.xml files. It can be defined at the engine or host or context level in the configuration. Now a little bit on the implementation of the valves. A valve is designed with a generic interface org.apache.catlina.val. Tomcat also provides an abstract class org.apache.catlina.vals.val base that can be safely extended. The main method of the valve base is the invoke method where you can access both request and response. You can see the hierarchy of classes depicted in uh, this slide. Creating a custom valve requires the necessary logic to be executed and then the invoke method needs to be called for chaining to the next valve in the pipeline. This slide shows how is the standard valves, which are the default valves that are invoked at the engine or a host or context or a wrapper level. You can see that it's pretty much the similar implementation. Standard engine valve invokes a standard host. Standard host valve invokes a standard context valve. Standard context valve invokes a standard wrapper valve. And finally, uh, standard wrapper valve calls for the filter chain and servlet processing. So if there are no valves, valves as such is defined by default in the Tomcat configuration, the chaining will be executed only with the standard valves. Now let us uh, discuss about a few commonly available valves that comes with the Tomcat. There are access logging valves that intercepts the request and responses and uh, capture the request and response attributes and processing stats such as the time taken etc. And then it writes them to a log file. This might be the most common valve that we normally use with the Tomcat. There are many configuration parameters that can be configured with the access log valve. In addition to the access log valve, there is an extended access log valve that complies to the extended log file format defined by the W3C. Another category of valves are the access control valves. As the name says, it plays a role of filtering of inbound requests to allow or deny the request that comes to the Tomcat. Some common examples of the access control valves are the uh, remote address valve, remote host valve, remote cider valve, etc. Taking remote address valve as an example, it allows you to compare the IP address of the client that submitted this request against uh, one or more regular expressions and either allow the request to continue or refuse, the process, uh, refuse to process the request from that particular client. Another set of valves are the authentication valves. The valves in this section implement org.apache.catlina.authenticator interface. These valves intercepts the request for authentication implementation. Basic Authenticator, Digest Authenticator, Form Authenticator, um, Spengo valves are some examples of the authenticator valves. There are many commercial off-the-shelf products have even custom authenticator valves for their product to integrate in Tomcat. Error report valve is an error handler for the HTTP status codes and it generates and return HTML error pages. It can also be configured to return predefined static HTML pages for specific status codes and exception types. <laughs> 
Stuck thread detection valves are used to detect the request that takes longer time to process, which might uh, possibly indicate that the thread that is processing it is stuck. Additionally, it can also interrupt such threads to uh, try and unblock them. Hellcheck valve implements the org.apache.catalina.valves.hellcheck valve. This is a very useful valve when uh, using with the load balancers in front of Tomcat servers or when using uh, Tomcat on containers in Kubernetes or similar container orchestrations. The persistent valve that implements the per request session persistence. It is intended to be used with non-sticky uh, load balancers. How do we create the custom valve? Actually, creating the custom valves are fairly easy. Modifying the valves that comes with the Tomcat is not something recommended, but certainly uh, it can be used as a reference when you build your custom valves. When you write the custom valves, you may sometimes need to use the external libraries as well. So pay attention that you have all dependencies properly packaged and used when you create the custom valves. Here I will explain what are the common steps as such to create a custom valve. Depends on your build tool, you need to first set the dependencies for your development. For example, if you use Maven, ensure the pom.xml is added with the necessary dependencies, including the external dependencies. Now, with dependencies set, the next step is to write your logic, right? Um, basically, you are extending the valve-based abstract class, and you will have an invoke method defined with override. You can define your requirement logic in the invoke method. By design, uh, attributes of the request and response that goes through the pipeline will be accessible. As an example, um, if you wanted to check the, say, headers or add some custom headers to the request before the application deployed in the Tomcat to process, your logic can be defined in such a way that uh, you can read the request headers and carry out the validations or checks, whatever, and then set the custom headers and finally perform the get next dot invoke method to invoke the next valve in the chain. If your valve requires certain parameters to be taken, ensure to uh, set the necessary getters to in the server.xml. It is also advised to use the necessary loggers so that you are able to check the logs of the logic flow, which will be very useful later. Once you are done, perform the build and build the jars, which can be copied to the class paths of the Tomcat. If you use uh, external libraries in your code, ensure to copy them as well, apart from the custom valve jar. Valves can be defined in the server.xml and with the required parameters to the valve, and restart the Tomcat JVM to pick up the new valve. With what we discussed on the valves and how it works, let us uh, take a few use cases as an example of how Tomcat valves can be used and how it can be made useful as such. Let us look at the first case, Tomcat request rate limiter valve. This is a good example of how the Tomcat valves can be extended for our use cases. The objective behind this use case is that requests are processed through the request processing pipeline in a Tomcat. But what if there is a mechanism to handle the inbound request uh, uh, traffic throttling and controlling it? Further, are there any possibilities of dynamically throttling uh, the inbound traffic? We normally think that, uh, you know, uh, traffic shaping or traffic throttling is a job of a load balancer or it's a work of a proxy server such as Apache HTTP server or Nginx or Envoy in front of it, or maybe the service mesh where it is being deployed. But here we can leverage the capability of valves in Tomcat to do this and further scale it up. So how should be the solution? As valves intercept all requests that flow through the Tomcat, we can 
implement a logic to handle the rate limiting. But then the next question is that what should be our rate limiting logic? Uh, thanks to Google Guava, which is a collection of utility APIs offered by Google. It has the rate limiting APIs that is using the token bucket algorithm. I'm not going into the specifics of the token bucket rate limiter algorithm, but be aware that the token bucket can generate tokens continuously at a specific rate that is defined. If the token is not used or if it is consumed slowly than it is generated, the tokens will accumulate in the bucket until it is filled. Subsequent tokens will be overflowed from the bucket. Guava rate limiter APIs support two approaches. One is a smooth burst as a fixed burst rate. Another approach is a gradual uh, rate increase until it reaches the defined uh, rate using a smooth warming up algorithm. Let me go through the next slide, which has a diagram explaining the flow of the request rate limiter valve. So when the Tomcat starts up, we can define a fixed rate. This can be set as an attribute to the valve that is defined in the server XML. When the request starts uh, flowing in, Tomcat request rate limiter valve will be intercepting all requests, right? Now, when the valve intercepting the request, the rate limiter logic kicks in and it calls the rate limiter APIs to get a token. All such requests are placed in a queue. If the queue is small, if the queue is full, um, rate limiter valve can set a response code such as 429 and can return the response back to the client. 429 is the too many request response code, but it is optional uh, and you can choose uh, maybe another response code depends on your requirement. <coughs> If the 429 is what is used as a response code for such cases, an optional retry after a header also can be included that gives the client the information on how long it can wait before a retry. If the request is managed to get the uh, queue to occur, get in the queue to acquire a token, it will wait there until it receives a token. Once the token is received, the subsequent valves in the request processing pipeline will be processed. This way, we limit the flow of the uh, flow to the application which is deployed in the Tomcat to uh, receive and process the request only as per the rate which we set. This has a great potential, especially for application which needs to uh, run at an optimum level. Getting a token or placing the request in the queue are basically implemented as an abstraction. And in the logic that you implement, these things are actually handled in just an aqua method. Valves leave uh, one more possibility here. You can dynamically change the rate limit value. For example, the application deployed in a Tomcat is running. There are more inbound request uh, traffic um, during specific time or days of the week. If the rate is defined statically as a valve parameter in the server.xml, you require a Tomcat restart to pick the new rate value, right? But a dynamic rate limiter eliminate that issue. For that, you can define a certain controller request. Now, what is the concept of a controller request? You can associate a logic within the valve that uh, when a request comes in with say slash controller, it means that it is for dynamically controlling or setting the rate limit and not intended for processing by the application deployed in the Tomcat. However, necessary security enforcement and checks needs to be in place before enabling such a, a dynamic controlling mechanism to uh, avoid the possible misuses as well. These controller requests, when a Tomcat valve processes, the valve can take the new rate and can be applied dynamically using the rate limiter API methods. So what is the advantage here? Your Tomcat doesn't need to be restarted to pick the new traffic rate. Dynamic controller APIs gives another great opportunity. The opportunity of uh, you know, building a controller 
control plane for uh, dynamically control the uh, traffic rate and traffic shaping. Now let us move to the next use case where the valve would be of a great help. That is in the area of troubleshooting. What are the areas where developing a request debugger valve would be useful? While I must admit that troubleshooting is more of a case by case need, I would uh, like to shed some lights around this area. Uh, the debugging uh, that will be done by a developer may be different from the debugging that is done by a production operations team, right? Which are the areas where having such a valve, a debugger valve would be useful? You can use uh, such a valve for capturing the request and response attributes. While I agree that we have already a great tool, uh, the request dumper filter, but same capabilities can be certainly customized and extended with a debugger valve with more than what the request dumper filter can provide. You certainly can't put a, a request dumper filter on a Tomcat instance that processes hundreds of requests every few seconds. The log writing itself will be a very resource intensive operation, right? What you can do in such cases? You can write the request debugger valve to capture the logging on selective uh, requests, thus uh, you know, avoiding the logging for requests that you are not interested in. Similarly, uh, you can capture the certificate attributes in a two-way TLS request using this valve and can log them. Some of the such ad, uh, certificate parameters that are of interest may be the certificate expiry dates, serial numbers or the distinguished name of the certificate etc not limited to that sometimes you may need to uh, capture the threat states or jmx runtime being attributes uh, while the requests are being processed debugger valves would be a useful mechanism there as well while these may not be something that needs to be set up on uh, live or production systems but it will certainly help developers to peep into the internals of the Tomcat and the application in a very efficient manner. One more interesting area is about the capturing and logging everything into the external systems. In my opinion, I think uh, gone are the days where everything needs to be captured to files locally. Now you have the opportunity to send the matrices or logs to other external systems for processing and analysis. For example, uh, performance matrices or logs can be fed into the Elasticsearch or Kafka, which can be further uh, used effectively to process and analyze and whatnot. It's endless possibilities with the troubleshooting and enabling such a logic through the walls uh, would be giving a enormous capabilities. A simple diagram is shown here on how should be a request debugger valve flow can be. Not very complicated logic here. Typically all what you needed is capture the various request attributes, log them or send us feeds for monitoring systems and invoke the next valve. As mentioned here uh, before, there are endless possibilities, right? And you can use the Tomcat valves to leverage and carry out the debugging very effectively. Let me quickly move to another useful use case of the Tomcat valve, a MTLS or a mutual TLS valve. This use case is an application of valve capture the inbound client's certificate attributes and use them for uh, use that for ensuring that the request is coming from a a legitimate client as such. There are cases where Tomcat server needs to trust and allow the request from a client application in cases such as uh, where Tomcat acts as a API server for example. Tomcat connector uh, allows the configurations where you can make the client authentication required with the client certificate verification configuration in the SSL host config section in the server.xml. In addition, you can make a client cert authentication for the resources as well. But this mechanism merely ensures that the client provides a valid certificate to Tomcat server and 
Tomcat server is able to trust it based on the CS certificates in the trust store. In large organizations, you may have multiple applications using the certificate signed by the same internal PKI systems and may have common CA trust chains in the trust stores. This can open up a challenge. How do Tomcat server ensure that the client that connects to it is the authorized client? Because there can be a possibility that the client provide a valid certificate and Tomcat server may have the CA chains to trust the certificate provided by the client. So TLS handshake will be certainly successful and Tomcat will allow the request to flow in. In such cases, Tomcat needs a more secure or accurate way to know that the client is indeed the real client. I must say that Tomcat has realms for authentication but it won't suffice for all uh, such cases. MTLS valve is a use case for such a requirement where Tomcat server can securely store the certificate serial numbers of, a, of trustable clients as a one-time setup. These serial numbers can be stored in a vault securely. When a request comes to the Tomcat server from a client over a two-way TLS, what will happen? Two-way TLS handshake takes place at the TCP IP endpoint in the protocol handler in the connector. If the client is not providing a certificate or providing a certificate not signed by CA for which a Tomcat don't have the CA certificates to trust the client certificate, TLS handshake failure will happen, right? However, an unauthorized client's request can also get through as long as you know the client is providing the valid certificate to the Tomcat server and Tomcat server is able to trust it based on the CA certificates in the trust store. After TLS handshake is done at the connector, valves take up the next part in the request processing pipeline where the MTLS valve can uh, parse the certificate parameters and ensure that the serial number of the certificate is matching with the serial number stored in the vault. If yes, the request will be allowed, else a 401 uh, response code will be returned. Along with the certificate serial number, other attributes of the certificate uh, distinguished name can also be included in the whitelisted list. Diagram here shows how the flow would be. As mentioned, two-way TLS would take place at the connector. The request is further passed to the valve in the pipeline. The valve would be intercepting the request and parse the X509 certificate attributes. MTLS will be included with the, uh, with the logic to compare the certificate serial and distinguished name with uh, the whitelisted set of values and will either allow or deny the request from the client. So far, we have looked at valves, how it works, and we also seen few use cases where valves can be used effectively. Now, just a few caveats and performance considerations while using the valves. Let's look at the uh, performance considerations. Likewise, we use the Google Guava for the rate limiter valve. There may be requirements that uh, we need to use the third party libraries. On one end, it helps us avoid reinventing the wheel. On the other side, non-optimized usage of them can cause uh, the valve to take more time to process and eventually slow down the Tomcat. Valves are good mechanism in Tomcat, but too many valves can be an overkill too, as it slowed down the Tomcat request processing. So use the valves diligently. Poor coding practices is again another issue. It can be anything from cluttered code to inefficient object handling, etc., etc. Ensure that your code is reviewed and optimized for the performance. Ensure to uh, do the performance test before uh, rolling out the valve in the production or the live systems. We have discussed a use case where a valve can push the logs or live performance matrices to external systems as a feed. Ensure that the feeds are asynchronous 
Pay attention to the latency that can be erased while sending feeds to the external systems. Now let us look at a few caveats. Valves are placed uh, in the request processing pipeline, but it is not the start of the Tomcat processing and inbound request, right? As mentioned in the previous slide, connector receives the inbound traffic. Only then the request comes to the pipeline. So for valves like rate limiter valve, connector and the server are the entry point to the request. It means it should be a bottleneck for the uh, inbound traffic. So ensure to pay attention to this area as well. Another thing is on the cluster Tomcat setup. Can we use valve in a Tomcat cluster? Yes, but you may need to pay attention on case by case basis on if your logic goes well in a cluster Tomcat setup. So coming to the key takeaways, valves play a key role in the Tomcat's uh, request processing pipeline. It will be a great uh, mechanism to intercept um, and do the pre-processing of the request. Valves can be created with a custom logic that perform extended logic implementation or uh, checks at the request processing pipeline. Custom valves can be uh, developed and implemented extending the valve base fairly in an easy manner. When developing valves, please do pay attention to uh, performance optimization and the caveats which I have mentioned. With that, I'm concluding my session. Uh, thank you for listening to this session. Thank you.